make a fire yesterday and look at that 13 degrees so there must be a bit of residual heat which is staying uh, must be staying within the walls when I, when I go to bed tonight well that makes sense doesn't it I mean I live inside a, a shelter and one of the things about shelters is you have insulation and uh, it takes a while to um, for for the heat to equalize because the outdoors is not 13 degrees it's minus two today I was debating about going out and getting a haircut as I'm starting to look a bit like um, oh, what's his name have you ever seen porridge um, Fletcher's uh, cellmate he keeps calling him gobber my hair's starting to look a bit like gobbers so um, I'm also in two minds about it because I think, well, at least if I've got my hair long, it it works a bit like a scarf or a hat, and it and it keeps me warm. But I know I feel better with uh, with a haircut. And speaking of feeling better, I was uh, listening to something about um, light and uh, our lack of it these days, or rather, uh, the wrong sort of light. And uh, I'm sure we've. I say we're all familiar with um, with uh, uh, the dangers of uh, blue light and unbalanced blue, especially at night time, but you may not be aware. So the, the light behind me is a white LED, and it's, it's quite harsh. So when the sun's down, I, uh, I turn it off, and... Um, why do I turn it off? No, I I don't turn it off. It's also got a multicolour mode. So I turn it instead to um well let's just put it on the orange and then you, you can see what, what orange looks like. See? There's white. That's orange. That's yellow. And then you've also got purple as well. And yeah, you can have red green and uh, blue but anyway let's have it back on white and that's about as powerful as the the light outside if not a bit darker so anyway if you're not familiar with it too much blue light at night is stimulating and it affects our circadian rhythms your circadian rhythms are things what uh, regulate your metabolism and tell your body when you should be asleep and awake and seeing as I've uh, been to the doctors about my insomnia and uh, hopefully I'll get something done about it I thought well um, you know it's uh, it's one of those things I'm gonna have to work on so I've been a bit mindful about um, about light levels and uh, yeah when I woke up today I thought what am I going to do and initially I thought to myself well I'll go and drive refuel my car and then on the way back I'll go to the hairdressers and next to the hairdressers is a cafe so I could get breakfast haircut and fuel done and then I'd have a sense of accomplishment but then and I'm not showing it to you my room's a mess. I recently got a, a new chair in kit form and it's behind me, as is my leftover PC, which I've got to take upstairs. And I really want those cleared and out of my room so that when I come into this place, I've got a big space. And um, I'm just not doing that at the moment and I ought to be doing it. And because I'm not doing it, it's bothering me. But then I'm not going to be able to do any of this stuff if the temperature is that. I really, oh, and also let's put it into, uh, I'll just press the button to turn it to fat and tights. So we got it uh, that for those that live in the one country on earth still using fat and tights as a measurement. Um, I mean, we invented the damn scale and we even we abandoned it because it's not practical. We have uh, 
We have a hybrid system here in the UK, and I get a feeling that our former colonies, they like to do things different to us out of spite. Um, Ireland, for example, they insist on having uh, metric speed limits, whereas we use imperial speed limits, which is uh, funny because they also drive on the left, whereas the rest of Europe drives on the right. Um, they still use UK sockets, although I heard in the 60s and 70s they had to go at using the um, European Schutko style. Was, well, that's German, but the French and the Italian systems are somewhat compatible with the German ones. Which is why you'll see a, a hybrid uh, Schuko connector where it's got the uh, sticky out earth pin that you get in the French system along with the um, earth sheath that you get in the German system. So often you have shot sockets with um, the earth sheath, uh, uh, the, those little pins at uh, the top and bottom of the um, circle. You have the sticky out earth pin for the French. And then there's the two-prong connector, uh, which works with that. The Italian one's slightly different because they put their earth prong in the middle between the two other prongs and slightly to the side, so it keys the plug to only go in one way. Anyway, Yaris tried the Shuko system, but uh, it doesn't... They, they went back to using UK ones, so... Apart from in hotels, you probably or old houses, you won't see any European style sockets in an Irish house, as um, we use ring mains and the Irish use ring mains, and that was done as a um, copper saving measure. I'm told it was due to the war because uh, copper was in short supply, and the idea behind it is. You can use thinner cables if you connect them into a ring because then it balances. So what's what's the other the alternative? I think the other alternative is um, is sort of spokes. I don't know actually. I've only ever done ring mains, so I can't really say. I I think I looked it up once. Like what do they do in France and Germany? And it's just like oh, so you're using spokes. Well. That sort of makes sense, really, because, but actually involves the use of more um, copper because you're sending a, a length of cable from each socket back to the distribution board. Whereas um, in a in a UK circuit, you try and connect all the sockets into a ring, and then you can have spokes coming off of the ring, but you try not to. Uh, th those generally go like, oh well, you're not going to have much. Um, you're not going to have much being used on this one. So if you had like, say, for example, a socket where a kettle is being used, and you put a spoke on it for a microwave, that's that's a bad idea because they're both high current devices. But if you had, say, like um, a spoke where uh, uh, a desk lamp is plugged in, or a router, or a fridge. And then you put a spoke coming off of it to plug like a, like a games console or um, or a lamp. Then yeah, that's going to be okay. I can't remember what the. It's been it's been more than two decades since I did the um, the part sixteen wiring breaks and. I can't remember how much current the uh, two and a half amp uh, solid core is two and a half mil solid core is rated for. We used uh, two different thicknesses of uh, cabling. Now this may have changed because again my knowledge is limited to the part 16 and um, I didn't even do part 17 which would have been more interesting to me because that's when you got the uh, wiring regs for ethernet which never really took off because with the um, with the preponderance of uh, uh, Wi-Fi in domestic appliances, domestic Ethernet wiring never took off. And for commercial Ethernet wiring, it's dead easy because you've got your your ceilings where you put all the trunking in, and um, it's, it's, it's an absolute doddle to put cabling in offices. It's just when you're trying to drill it through walls and put plaster in it, that, that's when things get hard. Um, 
So yeah, I've forgotten how much current. And it's one of those things that if I was really bothered, I could look it up. But I know it's rated at far less than um, what it can carry. Because um, there is a chance if you've got a break in your ring, then you may have like one of the two and a half mil uh, cable runs is carrying all of the current. Whereas the other two and a half um, mil cables are only doing one or two sockets. I mean, ideally, if you have a break in your ring, it should be in the middle. Um, but breaks are never ideal, are they? I mean, the worst sort of break is where you've got a break right towards the beginning of one run. So then all of your other sockets, they're just on a line from the other two and a half. But the thing is, especially now that... I mean, that would be a good question as well. Like, what was the um, electricity consumption of a 1970s house compared to a 2020s house, you know? Because back then, your desk lamps would have all been incandescent. I mean, in a, a few cases, you'd have had a fluorescent light, but those were really constrained to factories. And I think even back in the 70s, people were using fluorescents in the kitchen. But, uh, I mean... Growing up, there was really just a sort of thing like you have them in a storage room or a garage because the light is unpleasant and it takes a while to turn on and it's noisy and um, you know there's there's a bunch of problems with fluorescence. I like fluorescence. I think it's really cool how you got two electrodes and there's no physical connection with them. There's just a conductive gas. And then you've got an electric plasma which glows, and then you've got your neon bulbs which are very nice. And then with the fluorescent, they just put a coating of fluorescing material on it, which converts the ultraviolet light into more visible light, uh, sort of greenish white. Mm. Yep. fire eh I'll stir at this for a while I'll have a bowl of cold cereal to warm me up <laughs> and um, then I'll get to work on that chair I don't know why was I talking about electricity so much I was talking about the light bulb then I was talking about wiring why was I talking you know when I come to review this video I'll probably see like oh that's what I was talking about and then I'll just put in the comments I was talking about such and such because of X or Y. Um, well, I've been researching light, but how did I segue into talking about electrical wiring? Wiring rigs? Ireland with its uh, sockets? Oh, yeah, that's it. The temperature was 57 degrees in Fartin tights, yeah. Uh, the Irish tried using the European system and they found our one is superior. So even though the spite says, well, we can't do anything the Sassanacs do, they're like, hang on, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater here. And they realised that in spite of us being arrogant arseholes, you know, sometimes the arrogance is merited. Like, for example, a lot of people myself included, will say that the French are arrogant and vain. Um, but what a lot, not many people will, will qualify that and say the arrogance and vanity of the French is warranted because uh, their culture is the envy of the world. I mean, I know Austria has, has produced some rather fine examples of culture and classical music, but they're not French, are they? You know, that... And that's the other thing as well. I mean, like, the Austrian cuisine and the Austrian wine, which I'm, I'm fond of, you know, it's perfectly good, but snobs will turn their nose up at it. Snobs will say, well, it's not French, is it? You know, they, they'll have a Wiener Schnitzel, which, as I found out, is, got, is, is made from veal. And... Because um, I thought Wiener was, like... Oh yeah, this is another weird thing as well. Like, we call it Vienna. They call it Wien. And then when they see Wiener Schnitzel, it's not a corn dog. It's 
it's uh, it's a schnitzel of a uh, veal, um, and it's from Vienna. Well, that's the thing. So anyway, Austrian culture and stuff is great, um, but it's not as good as uh, the French, and I don't know why, because their cuisine and and well. Um, you know, Beethoven and Mozart, they are Austrian, weren't they? They're, they're not French. Ah, but without the French, we wouldn't have Eric Satie or... Or uh, was Vivaldi French? Answers in the comment. Where's Vivaldi from? Where did he study? What's his ancestry? Because I think he's French. Mind you, in a name like Vivaldi, he could be Italian. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, the French arrogance warranted... German arrogance, not so much. <laughs> uh, and the English arrogance is like, so, yeah, in spite of ourselves. Yeah, but for whatever reason, the colonies don't like us. Maybe it's just, oh, I don't know. You know we, we could speculate on that until the cows come home. But I just find it funny when... Um, the colonies you use metric like Australia and Ireland both insist on using um, kilometres whereas here in England we use what's practical I mean I know a lot of people the Americans say that uh, Fahrenheit is a more humanistic system but like for example they'll say oh 50 degrees is cold and it's like, right, what's that? 50 degrees, that's what, 11, 11? No, if it was 11, that's 55. So it's what, 10 degrees? Yeah, 10 degrees is cold. I understand 10 degrees being cold. And then uh, 25 degrees, I think, is 90. You know, when it's 100, it's like, oh, okay, now you're dealing with, like, it's 38 degrees. Maybe 90 is, like, uh, 30 degrees. Yeah, I, d I don't know. I mean, if you're brought up with farting tights, then it makes sense to you. But I, I've only ever known um, centigrade. And you know, it's one of those things where if it's below 18 degrees, if it's between 15 and, and 18, well, you know, you wear a jump and you're all right. If it's 18 to 25, that's comfortable. If it's 25 to 32, it's hot. That's t-shirts and shorts weather. If it's 32 to 40, it's like, well, you want to stay indoors away from the sun. And if it's 10 to 0, it's miserable. But funny enough, when it's like 0 to minus 10, I find that's quite enjoyable. I've never been somewhere where it's less than minus 10, mind you. So the Canadians saying when it's like minus 34 and you, your eyes water up, but then you blink and your eyelids get frozen shut. It's like, well, okay, you really shouldn't be out in that weather because you're going to lose your ears through frostbite. In fact, that's... I do know... Um, I suppose he is Czech, but also... No, he's half Czech. His mum's English. I know this half Czech guy. And he told me that the kids um, in uh, Czechoslovakia, as it was back then, Actually, it might have been Yugoslavia back then. Or was Yugoslavia just... Anyway, point being, winter's there, really cold. And they were told, yeah, um, if you've got frostbite in your ears, don't touch them or your earlobes will fall off. So there's probably like a bunch of uh, 50 to 60-year-old uh, Czech guys or girls who are missing parts of their ear due to frostbite because they did play with them. And as painful and as itchy as it is, if you let the blood go back into the thawing out bits of flesh, the the, um, the cartilage will survive, and then your flesh builds up around it. And that's why you should wear a ushanka because they protect your your ear flaps. So anyway, I think the theme for today's um, fire video is procrastination because. I don't really want to do anything today. I, I must build the chair, and I'll benefit from that because the chair I'm sat on is just frankly uncomfortable. It's 
is one I had to go upholstering myself and probably the foam isn't up to snuff and it's vinyl as well so it's when it's hot it's sweaty and it doesn't breathe and I've got a uh, one with a cloth mesh so it breathes a lot better and you could argue that oh a cloth mesh is very cold it's like yeah but you see my chair's there when I'm sat by the desk I'm there so if I have a cloth mesh it means I get all this beautiful infrared heat which I can feel coming out now warm me up 